Hi guys, it's Jacob from StringBuzz here, StringBuzzWorld.org being the music journalism site, links are in the description down below. And we have a brand new discursive type topic for you today, and that's every musician has a good track in them. I'm going to refer to the original articles I usually do for these videos, so I hope you enjoy. So as music fans and music listeners, there is nothing we like more than shaming the garbage that comes out on a daily basis. Especially as a British music journalist myself, there is nothing I like more than really moaning about music. Music. However, every now and then, a couple of gems arrive from the proverbial rough that can prove us wrong. So it begs the question, can anyone make a good song? Even though it sounds like a bit of a silly question, there is some depth to it as a statement. Music is the most subjective art form on earth, with fans tearing into each other all the time over the smallest of reasons. We have so much pride in what we think sounds good and sounds bad, that we often forget that the bad isn't always that bad. There have been many acts in the past who have released utter rubbish and are known for that utter rubbish by many, but still go on to develop a fan base. So why is that? Well, everyone connects with music on a different basis or on different platforms, whether it's because of a personal situation, nostalgia, catchiness, its musicality, its production or whatever. We all try to find something good in new music. This for me does mean that every musician is more than capable of having a good track in them, regardless of their reputation and prior efforts. Too often now we judge a song's quality on its commercial viability, aka how much it has sold and where it reached in the charts, rather than on characteristics that matter as a performance art. For me, a good track has to have longevity. It has to have the ability to not be seen as a temporary commercial product, and instead a piece of art that people want to replicate or simply enjoy for years to come. However, we often coin the term one-hit wonder for people or musicians who have made music that fall upon these lines without being able to back those efforts up. However, those same commercial products we mentioned earlier can also be classed as one-hit wonders. So where do we really draw the line? For me, you have to look at music as a mathematical equation. Each part of the equation is there to add to one another to eventually equal a great track. Now, the equation can be lopsided. For example, the track might have an incredible production value and sound really pristine as an audio file, but might not be particularly complex or strong in the theory department. Another example might be that the track is really complex and technical, but isn't catchy. So for me, there are five elements you have to have in your equation to make the track work. Starting with number one, it has to have a moderate to great production value. And why is that? Well, things only sound as good as they sound in your ears. I think that's pretty obvious by now. So each timbre has to be defined, each tone and layer profound, and each lyric has to be rich with diction and clarity and just sound nice to people's ears. That's the whole point of music is making something sound nice. Number two is that it has to have a strong chorus hook that is both memorable and catchy. You've got to give something that people are going to recognize straight away, that people are going to hum away for a long time, that's going to give it longevity for the next day, week, month, and so on and so forth. It's probably the most important part of this equation. Number three is that it has to have a degree of complexity in the instrumentation, including decoration on the second verse. Now, a lot of people leave this one out because it's not really seen as very important in, say, like pop music, rap music, and all that sort of stuff. But I'd argue that it's equally important there. A lot of people seem to just copy and paste their first verse and really leave out the second verse. But the second verse has to have decoration that gives you a re-listenable value. The next time you listen to it, you might be looking out for that decoration, or there might be just little transitions which are really exciting to hear on your repeat list. So yeah, I think complexity as well as decoration is incredibly important from that second verse and onwards. At number four now, it has to have one definitive and stylistic moment which proves that you as an artist have made this product yourself. You've got to throw your character and your personality and your experiences and your own narratives into this song because people want to connect with you on an intimate basis the majority of the time when they're listening to music. So why not make it that intimate experience they're looking for? Lastly, and this is number five by the way, and I hinted at it earlier, the song has to be capable of lasting the test of time. Now this is easier said than done, sure, but if you can't see your track having equal value as a narrative in five years time, then you're doing something wrong. Because a lot of people are writing songs on trends to make money right now, and that's great for a temporary product like I mentioned earlier, but if you want something that is going to really get stuck in people's head and be classed as a great track by all, then you're going to have to make a song that stands the test of time. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this all sounds very easy when written or set, but to execute them as procedures 
is difficult and it may take many, many attempts to get them right. But any musician can attempt to make a song with this in mind and through trial and error they will eventually succeed. Some artists make it first time, some artists make it multiple times, some artists it takes a career for them to make it. But everyone is more than capable of making that elusive good track. So if you like this video then please leave a like, comment what you think in the comment section down below, subscribe to see more and I'll see you around next time. Bye bye.